Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patson. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can design this 3D looking logo, letter form, whatever you really want inside of Illustrator. This effect is super easy to do, but can be quite tricky to wrap your head around if you haven't done it before. I would say this effect works best with screens because if you're doing it on typography that's going to be printed or logo types that are going to be printed, then it's going to be very hard to see the gradient. So it works better on digital format. It's this 3D effect that we love to use and it makes things look super modern, super cool. It gives you a cool way of bringing gradients into your design and it can really elevate a single idea that you have. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Okay, so I'm an Adobe Illustrator, like always today, and the first thing I'm gonna do is pick colors. It's the simplest way of doing this. I've got this pink, I've got this purple, and this other darker purple, which we may change later. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna select these and the easiest way to bring them into the swatches which is the best way if we're going to be working on gradients is to highlight them then go down to your color swatches if you don't know where your color swatches are go to window go down to swatches and if it's got a tick it's somewhere in your workspace all we'll do is to highlight them go ahead and click this folder and just press ok you'll see down here you've got your color swatches right there ready to be used so we can get rid of these colors right now okay so the first thing i'm going to do is very simply create the letter e i'm going to go ahead and go to my square or my rectangle tool and i'm just going to really quickly eyeball this there's no point in making it spend ages on this. You know, we just want to get something down. I'm going to make this a bit thicker than this. I'm going to drag this down here. I've got my smart guides turned on as well, which is command U. If you don't know, basically what they allow me to do is you see these pink lines. They're the smart guides. They just happen automatically. It allows me to really easily place objects correctly. And I think that is okay. In fact, I'm going to make it a slightly thicker on all angles here just because I think it would work better. I'm just holding Alt or Option to drag these and I'm just changing them. I'm using the same things. This isn't exactly how you would design the letter E if you're doing it as a font. It's a, quite a bit different, but for this effect, it works fine. I'm gonna highlight it and like always, I'm going to make it a copy. The easiest way is to just highlight it hold option or alt and shift and just drag. We're not gonna worry about anything over here. Over here is just for things that we want to go back to later if we need to. So what I'm gonna do is highlight now and we wanna make all these shapes into sort of one shape right now. I'm gonna highlight all the shapes and I'm gonna go to the Pathfinder function. Again, if you don't know where that is, go up to window down to Pathfinder, but I'm gonna go to unite and that will unite all the shapes together and it will make it into one shape as you see there rather than multiple shapes. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tidy up the anchor points. There are anchor points that have been placed here that they do not need to be there and they will sort of mess around with the design. So simply press minus and it, you will come up with this pen tool here with the minus next to it. And we're gonna go to anchor points that we don't need. So anything that's like straight and it has multiple anchor points in the middle, kind of like here, we don't need these two. So we only need this one and this one. Go ahead and just click, click. There you go. Make sure everything's all good. Press command Y. This will take you to outline mode. Just make sure all of them there work correctly, that they're all placed nicely. Yes, they are. Very good. Now, again, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste, just like so. So we have it over there. And in fact, what I like to do a lot as well is just scale that down a little bit. Now, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and start curving things around. Curving in Illustrator or curving edges is super easy nowadays. It didn't always used to be like this. So it's quite a cool thing to have. We're going to go ahead and press a, which will bring us to the direct selection tool, which is over here on the left. The difference with that and the normal selection tool is it allows us to pick out nodes or these anchor points a lot easier. And we can just highlight one, hold shift, highlight the bottom one here. And you see these little buttons, click and drag, and that will literally round your corner for you super easily. And we're gonna just drag it to around about here. I think that looks good. So now we've got the first rounded corner. Now we need to create the depth look. And the way that we do that to create the 3D-ness is by adding shapes on top of the shapes we already have already. This is the easiest way. What I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna press M and you see I've got my smart guides on. It says path right next to my cursor. Make sure you have smart guides on. It it, if you don't have them, you're going to have a hard time with this. We're going to draw a shape around this shape like so. And we want it to get it to intersect with this line here. Now to have you easily see this, I'll change the color. And we're going to go and scale right in, zoom right into it. And we're going to try and get it as perfect to this line here as possible, which I think that will do for now. We're going to go to the direct selection tool again, which is just here. Click on this top anchor point and we're going to 
just round the corner again. And you can see how the effect is taking shape here. You can see we're getting somewhere right now, but we've got a lot to do before then. The next thing we need to do is round this corner off down here. You don't have to do this. I mean, you can if you want to, but go ahead and drag here. We want to get both of those anchor points because remember there's a shape underneath there. We want to get that shape too. So grab that and just round it like so and boom, you've got that there, very rounded. Now we don't want to repeat this every time. it will be a bit boring. So hold option, hold shift, drag down. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to stop that one there. We're going to move these ones by selecting them inside like so. And we're just going to curve that one in too. Now for the bottom one to the top, it is exactly the same shape. We just need to reflect it. So the easiest way I found to do this is hold option, drag with shift. Then if you press O and click with the option or alt on, what it will do is it will bring up this box here. And what this box does is it allows us to reflect it perfectly without having to like rotate it and transform it and all this weird stuff. So make sure you go to vertical, just press OK. We're going to drag this back over here so it meets there. Go to this one, drag it down. And what we got here is an E, the basic E without any gradients. At this point, again, highlight drag it over, make a copy. The reason why we're doing that is because we're going to select all of these and we're going to press Command C to create a copy. So it's in our clipboard. We're going to highlight the whole shape. We're going to go to Shift and M. This is the Shape Builder tool, the best tool in Illustrator. And we're going to go ahead and hold Option, which will give us that minus part there. And we're just going to drag here because we don't want these. And what that does with the Shape Builder tool is it allows us to get rid of the shapes underneath. We've just used the shapes underneath as basically a reference. And because we've copied it, when we paste it, if you press Command V, it will just appear directly in the center of your view. So instead of doing that, press Command F, which will paste it back in place on top of the vector that we're working on. So now we've got these shapes and there's nothing underneath it. They fit perfectly. So what we want to do now is add some gradients. This is a really fun part. We're going to click on this main section here. Click this black and white swatch here. This is the easiest way I know of doing this. You press G, you get this little diagram, this little line. It's a slider. Go ahead and drag from up to bottom, like so. So the slider has got one color here. The great thing about this slider is that when we click on one of the shapes, we can actually change the color super easily. So I'm going to choose pink. And then down here, I'm going to choose the darkest purple I can find. And the great thing about this is that we can slide it and make it the gradient however we want. We're going to repeat the process to all of these here. So the easiest way of doing this, again, design is all about efficiency, is we're going to go ahead and press I when we're selected on that. And we'll just go ahead and click there. Now we can change and edit the gradient however we want. So for instance, we're going to actually change it by inverting it like so. And then this color here, we want to change to the darkest one. We want to make it quite dark and we can edit it just like so. And boom, right there, we've got a really nice looking gradient making it look 3D. Now to give it to all of these other parts of the E or the shape that you're working on, go ahead and highlight both of them and just press I again, use the eyedropper tool. But again, what we'll have to do is invert them which is quite annoying. And there we have got our gradiented logo, but that is not the end of the tutorial. Don't worry, we're gonna go into a bit more detail. If I go ahead and scale this down, you see something weird happens. We can't scale this down and we can't really expand it very easily because if we expand it, we'll have too many shapes because it's expanding a gradient. So it'll make them all into solid colors and it'll be all, it'll all be hectic. Instead of that, what we're gonna do is highlight this, go to object, we're gonna go to I think it's shape. We're going to press expand shape. So what happens now when we scale down, those corners that we've changed are not going to be edited as we scale down. So we've still got a gradient in there, but it's not getting weirdly scaled down like you would see in this one here. Now we can scale it to wherever we want. Here's a pro tip for anyone that wants to change the colors, but can't be bothered going back through all the gradients. Don't worry, I've got you here. What we do is highlight it. Up here, we have got this color wheel. It's called Recolor Artwork. Click that whilst you're highlighted and go down to the bottom where it says Advanced Options. And right here, we've got this weird box, this dialog box. Go to Edit. And what we can do is actually change the hues like so. And boom, we can change the brightness, saturation. Let's say I like that look and press OK. And straight away, we've got a recolored gradiented artwork here. So that is how you create an icon, but how do you create it for abstract logos or just any sort of logo designs? Well, I'm going to show you right now. 
But before I show you that, I just want to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you're a designer like myself, no matter what place you are in your journey, whether you're just starting out or you've got many clients, having a website is obviously super important and it's a priority. If you don't have a website, people won't find you. It's not good enough just to have social media. Your website means a lot to you and your brand. It is basically your own customized corner of the internet where people can see your personality through your visual identity. Now, the great thing about Squarespace is that you've got thousands of templates that you can fully customize without even knowing code. You don't have to code anything. You can fully customize it, have a shop, a blog, your portfolio, an about me page, and a place where clients could contact you for work. Squarespace is super affordable. No matter what position you are, you can use Squarespace. And the best thing about this is you get 20% off. A little pro tip, if you wanna try Squarespace before even buying it, if you go ahead and click the link down below and try Squarespace and just make a website, you can design the website for free, fully, but when you publish it, that's when you pay. So you can try it, make your website, and before you've even spent a penny, you've got it all ready to go, and then as soon as it's ready to publish to the world, you can go ahead and publish it. So go ahead, click the link for 20% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So creating a logo with this method is just as simple. Can I, in fact, it's actually a bit simpler, to be fair. All we do is we're gonna, I'm gonna create a random logo. Do not critique this. This is just a random, random design. I'm gonna do like a weird chat bubble thing, I think. Just creating a random shape, and what I'm gonna do, in fact, is just change the color right now, because I don't need that. Just copy this over. So so I've just got two shapes here, as you can see. I'll just change the color so you can see it. I'm just putting two shapes together. What I'll do with these two shapes is I'm gonna get rid of one of them by using the Shape Builder tool. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. So we've got a perfect clean line there. Obviously, if you spend more time on this than me, you'll be having more fun. Okay, so we've got two shapes here. I've got them lined up perfectly, like we did with the typography. So all I'm gonna do is go to the black and white function here. And instead of having black and white, when I go to the gradient tool, I'm just gonna go for like, this orange here. And where it connects, we're gonna make sure that the gradient is exactly where it should be for where it connects the darkest part. And I know this logo looks a bit weird. Don't worry, I fully know. It's just a example. And uh, we've got a logo right there, simply enough. And that kind of looks like a sticker. So to give it that modern logo aesthetic, I'm just gonna write sticker. Go ahead, choose one of my fonts. I think we're gonna use Fizby. Change that from black to a gray as it's easier to view. And boom, we've got an icon that kind of works you know, with a logo type right next to it to create this modern aesthetic. That is how you make your logo designs and typography 3D. It's the easiest way of creating like a 2D logo but giving it depth if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more logo design tutorials and just design tutorials in general press the red subscribe button you only have to do it once and it's free and it just lets you know whenever i've uploaded a new video also like and comment down below what you would have done differently i'd love to hear constructive criticisms about how this effect works let me know how you do it easily and i will catch you in the next video see you soon goodbye